Martin Molina is going to talk to us about uh, new techniques to optimize results with chimney grafts to revascularize aortic branches, uh, and he's going to be opposed by Peter Harris, and we'll introduce his topic uh, after Martin's finished. Martin? Thank you very much, Frank. Um, I have no disclosures. I don't think that the concept of chimney grafts need further introduction. Everybody is familiar with that nowadays. And you are also aware of the fact that we use chimney grafts both in the visceral portion of the aorta and to replace the entire arch if necessary, and also for urgent thoracoabdominal aneurysms where we use the so-called reversed chimney technique for the SMA. Uh, the major objection to chimney grafts has been the presence of proximal endoleaks that have been blamed on the so-called gutters, those little channels running alongside the chimney grafts on either side. As you can see, the gutters are in fact very small, and I think that in most cases the reason for the proximal endoleaks has been that people have placed too short chimneys. If you place a chimney that barely extends into the neck, and a stent graft that barely reaches the neck, then over time that chimney graft is likely to kind of fall down into the aneurysm and an endoleak will ensue. So what I think is needed is longer uh, chimney grafts that really extend into a neck above the aneurysm. And um, here is an example of that. And if you use longer chimney grafts, what will happen is that the chimney kind of spirals around the aortic component rather than running parallel to it. Here's an example from the aortic arch again. Uh, the advantage of the spiraling chimney, apart from extending the ceiling zone, is that it converts those vertical gutters into more oblique gutters that perhaps prevent endoleakage in a better way. If you use long chimneys, you must make sure that the chimneys are not being compressed. In this case, the left uh, renal chimney was fine, but the SMA got compressed. And the reason for that was that the renal one was uh, enforced by balloon-expanded stents in strategic segments where we suspected that compression may occur, while the SMA chimney was not enforced and therefore became compressed. So I think that the ideal chimney graft should be a composite stent graft that is enforced and rigid in portions where it's needed or when it has to be better fixated, but that is left flexible in portions where it needs to take the curve. Last, I would like to show you a quite new indication for chimney grafts, and that is aortic occlusion, such as this where until now we have refrained from using endovascular techniques because if you stent the aorta, you're likely to squeeze the thrombi and trash the visceral arteries. So what we suggest to you is to park chimney stents or stent grafts into the visceral arteries from a brachial approach, then park an aortic stent graft into the occluded aorta, but you don't inflate that. First, you inflate the visceral stents and thereby obliterate and protect the visceral arteries. Then, while those balloons are inflated, you open up the aortic stent graft and make sure that you get aortic flow to flush out any potential debris. And after that, you open up the visceral vessels to end up with this type of result. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that chimney grafts are applicable in all aortic branches for the urgent cases that are not candidates for branched or fenestrated stent grafts. I think that long spiraling chimney grafts improve the seal. I think that enforcement by balloon expanded stents is necessary in strategic portions and improves patency. And I also think that aortic occlusion is a new and interesting indication for this technology. Thank you for your attention. The other side of this issue will be addressed by Peter Harris, and the title we've given him is Limitation of Chimney Grafts. They're not as good as some say. Peter? Yes, thank you, Frank. 
I have uh, no disclosures uh, relevant to this uh, presentation. Well, of course, uh, uh, kidneys, uh, chimneys, chimneys do have their uses. But as Martin has pointed out to you, very kindly uh, to help my case, uh, chimneys leak. And chimneys leak always. Why? Well, again, Martin pointed out that uh, there are gutters alongside the chimneys. And you either have a situation like this, where the chimney is compressing the main stent graft with gutters along the side and a leak. Alternatively, you have this situation where the chimney itself is compressed and there's still a leak. So really the issue is when does the leak matter and what are the uses for chimneys that leak? Well there are two. I will concede that there are two places two roles for, for uh, chimneys. First, as a rescue procedure for accidentally overstented critical arteries, either in the arch or in the abdominal viscera, as shown there. And secondly, to optimize but not to extend existing ceiling zones, as for example in this case here. Now there's a prerequisite. If you're going to use a, a chimney for this situation, and that is there must be an existing adequate ceiling zone distal to the chimney, here. Otherwise, the leak matters, as in this arch situation here. So let's have a look at what happens in Malmo. There are not a lot of data on chimneys, but there are a couple of publications out of Malmo, one in 2008, another in 2009. Uh, here's the 2008 paper, 10 patients, four with uh, TVAR and six with uh, EVAR and chimneys. And if we look at the results of the four TVAR patients, there was one stroke, one type 1 endo leak, one uh, conversion. Of the six EVAR patients, one fatal bowel ischemia, one permanent dialysis. Conclusion of the Marmo team, Chimneys facilitate stent graft repair in aneurysms with inadequate ceiling zones. I don't think so. Second paper, 2009. 11 patients, all TVARs, and in these patients, again, one fatal stroke, two type 2 endoleaks, and one conversion. conversion uh, conclusion of the Malmo group, chimney grafts facilitate TVAR in patients with an inadequate proximal neck? I don't think so. In both cases, the correct conclusion is this. Chimneys may facilitate endovascular repair when the proximal ceiling zone is short but adequate, and when accurate placement of the stent graft is problematical, which seems to be often the case in Malmo. One last thought on this point. Except in exceptional circumstances, chimneys have become a thing of the past, and now we, nice, we breathe nice, clear air. And similarly, I would suggest to you that, except for rescue, endovascular chimneys should be superseded by alternatives which really do extend the ceiling zones, fenestrated endographs and branch devices. Chimneys do not extend the ceiling zones, and that's why they are overvalued by some people. Thank you very much indeed.